All right. So again, let me thank each of our speakers, and uh, we certainly appreciate their, participating, or their participation, and we're going to look forward to having them return to the stage toward the end of the session to uh, take some questions. Hopefully everyone identified something that could take, uh, you could take back into your own business and uh, use from their remarks. So, successful people do certain things, but I want to assure you that success in any business is a choice. Success does not happen by accident. How do you create success? Well, in our experience, there are only three things that drive success in any enterprise. You can outthink a problem, you can outwork something, or you can get lucky but let me assure you that luck is not a replicatable strategy. You know, the vast majority of really successful people in every field are those that are smart, and this organization is full of very, very smart people, but really successful folks are smart and they work really, really hard. So again, three approaches for success. One of those approaches is you can be smarter than your challenges. This is the outthink it. Though it's really helpful in solving a problem, to be smart, and again, we have a lot of smart people, not only in this room, but throughout the organization, it's not likely that any one of us is smarter, remarkably smarter, than any of the challenges that we face or anyone else. The second approach is to work harder, and this is the only one of the three, out think it out, work it, or get lucky, that you can personally control. Working harder, if you're working smartly, often can have the most immediate impact and the greatest impact on your business. Get lucky, luck is random. True luck is random, right? Nobody today said, you know, I probably need to think about retirement. I think I'll go down to the convenience store and buy a lottery ticket. Did anybody do that today? Because if you did, you got beat out of a dollar. Uh, well, it's nice when you can have a little bit of luck. You can't plan to get lucky. Now, sometimes when opportunity and preparation meet, you can create your own luck. And there are people sometimes who perceive that because you're successful, well, they got lucky. Eh, it doesn't really work that way in life. There is no substitute for hard work. Rarely will you ever hear someone really successful ascribe their success only to luck. It doesn't really work that way. Stephen Covey has a definition of the word proactive, and the definition is up on the slide behind me. What I want you to know is that you cannot always wait for things to unfold. Sometimes you need to act in such a way as to assert greater influence over outcomes. Your focus needs to be on what you can control and not worry about what you cannot control. So, how do we create success? Well, we know the cost of inaction is very, very high. If I have a dollar today and I do nothing but hold on to that dollar, that dollar every day, every week, every month, every quarter, every year is going to continue to decline in value. It will become less valuable in the future. I want to give you five things, or some combination thereof, that you can execute on today, or maybe better put, Monday, because I understand that there's drinking, dancing, and food later tonight, so let's assume you'll do it Monday, that you can immediately bring into your business that can create some success going forward. And those five things are on the slide behind me. So let's, let's talk about them. The first is leadership. And it was interesting, because I happen to know what was in the presentation deck, to listen to our franchise colleagues talk. Leadership is absolutely critical. If you're not aware of it, most of your employees don't want to be managed. They want to be led. They want to see you capable of doing the things that you're asking them to do, Remember your very first day? Does anybody here remember their first day walking into their brand new office 
a little bit of paint smell still going on. Maybe all the signs weren't perfect. Maybe all the pictures weren't up. You walked in that very first day committed to your own success. You were going to do whatever it would take to be successful. How about that first sales call? By the way, those are obscene phone calls. And what I mean by that is if you think about your end of the phone line, the first time the call came in where somebody wanted to talk to you about services and you were so nervous. You'd gone through training. You probably had your scripts in front of you. You're trying to answer questions. But you were going to make sure that you got that order. You were committed to win because you felt like you had to do it. I'm curious. You don't have to answer. But you do need to look inside yourself and say, boy, do I come into my business every single day as a leader willing to engage with my people, our caregivers, the clients and their families in the same manner I was the first day, the second day, the first week, the second week, the first month, the first year of our business? For those of you who have been in business for a period of time, I would challenge you to say, boy, do I come through the door committed to my business in the same manner that I was my first day? If, as you ask that question of yourself, you say, self, I don't have that same level of commitment, you need to think about what you need to do to get back to that. Second, sales. Most people do not naturally enjoy selling. It is not a behavior that most of us are genuinely comfortable with. And most people who buy a business, most owners over time, they want to be the manager. But nothing happens in any business until something is sold. Anybody ever hear that before? Wow, I should copyright that. Nothing happens until you create a sale. My point is, today, again, look in the mirror and ask yourself, am I acting like a sales leader? And I don't mean stop everything else you're doing and strictly get involved in sales, but I'm saying, you know what? It might be worthy to pick up the phone and show your folks what your expectation of them are. Along the way, in a lot of cases, when we go into companies, and most of the times when we go into companies, we're there because things are not going well. One of the things that we often find is that the manager of the business is so, man is so busy managing that they're not inspecting what they expect of their salespeople. Everything in this business and every other happens when something is sold. Third strategy, employer of choice. I have to tell you, sitting with your uh, organization last night at the uh, Caregiver of the Year dinner, and by the way, that was a fabulous event. Uh, that is something truly unique to home instead. It was an honor to be there, and um, wow, what a great recognition of the folks that make it happen. I was struck by Lori's remarks about the need to become the employer of choice. Every one of you in your local market should have an employer of choice strategy. And it's interesting, as Diane was talking about their involvement with the Alzheimer's organization, that they're not there strictly to promote the business, but they're using it as an opportunity to engage their caregivers in the community. What are you doing to be the employer of choice? If you think about your business from a very mercenary standpoint, every one of you is in the labor arbitrage business. What does that fancy word mean? It means that you live in the space economically between what you have to pay a caregiver and what you can bill their services for, and in the middle you have to pay all of your SG&A and operating expenses. The reality is, into the future, we know the market for services is going to expand, but the caregiver market is not going to expand proportionately. So in order to scale your business, you're going to have to be the place in your community where your caregivers want to work. What are you doing today to be the most attractive place for the best people? Because I've got a little bit of a news flash for you. The better the quality of the caregivers that you have, generally, the better the margin you're going to be able to command for their services. 
Is anybody in the room a capitalist? My hand's up because I am. I got news for you folks. That's your inventory. And I don't mean that in any manner that would be considered demeaning. But if you don't have caregivers, you can't provide services. If you can't provide services, no revenue. Is that a problem? Of course. So we want to be the place that caregivers and the best caregivers want to work. We want to engage those people. What's our highest honor? Caregiver of the year. So have you defined your employer of choice strategy? Number four, let's talk about time management. Everybody has the same amount of hours in a day. And what you do with those hours can determine how successful you are or you're not. This is a really interesting exercise that we go, for, or we go through with a lot of clients and a lot of staff. And I had the chance to be at the um, Home Instead offices for a day uh, in March, as Mark pointed out. And we talked about this with the executive team. And it was surprising to them that nobody in the room had ever thought about this before. But if each of you would say, I'm going to put in one additional focused hour of time every single day into my business during those weeks of the year where there's no holidays, there's no vacation time. It means there are about 40 of those weeks, depending on what holidays you celebrate. An hour a day, five days a week. At the end of the year, you end up with 200 extra hours or five weeks of time or 10% of the typical annual work year. If you brought focus and intensity to those hours, could you create 10% more revenue? 10% more profit? Are you working as well and as much as you should or could be? And listen, I understand success, different things to different people. But when your expenses exceed your revenue, that's a problem. Sometimes part of the solution is not only being very smart in how you're working, but sometimes working just a little bit longer. Some combination of all of these things can affect change. There's not one single idea, not one single strategy or thing that's going to move your business forward. I wish I had a silver bullet. I wish I could guarantee you success because if I could, boy, I would package that up and sell it. The reality is that success is going to come from doing several things new or differently. You heard from the St. Clairs. They tried to get creative in solving an issue unique to their business. Despite their best efforts, what they tried to do didn't work. They didn't, when it failed, say, well, this is something that we should completely abandon. They said, you know, we still have the problem. We've got to find a better approach. They tried again, and they created success. Sometimes success comes from doing things new, things differently, things creatively, but whatever those things are, they also work harder at them. You gotta commit. You gotta commit. You're in a changing environment, folks. Change is constant. It is the only constant. You cannot say, we're just gonna work harder doing things the same old way. You're gonna have to do some new things. You're going to have to work a little harder. You're going to have to do some things differently. The question you have to ask yourself is what you're doing today getting you closer to where you want to be tomorrow? And that's really at the heart of managing change. So as an organization, there are certain responsibilities the company has to help you. And I can tell you based on certainly my interaction over the last seven, might even be eight years now, of working with Home Instead, that they are absolutely committed to your success, but they can't do the work for you. 
Their job is to bring you the tools and the resources to help you be as successful as you can be. I can tell you from a best practices standpoint, the business processes, the support services, the training, the engagement that they have with you, best of class. Hands down, best of class. I have 99 clients out of the 100 I'll see this year that would love to emulate some of what's here. You have the best franchise system in the industry. You have the best business format in the industry. You have the best resources in the industry. But none of these things mean anything if you, as franchisees, don't use the tools, technology, and resources that are available to you. And the company, by the way, can bring a lot of resources to help you in each of your businesses. There's a lot of things that you can avail yourself of. But you also have some responsibilities in the relationship to yourself, to your associates, caregivers, and their families. You have some responsibilities to our franchise community. It was interesting over lunch yesterday that Deb was sharing that they have a co-op in their local market area and that the vast majority of the owners are engaged and participate. But there are a couple that strictly write the check and say, you know what, you take care of it. That doesn't help anyone. The organization can't be stronger than our weakest performers. The goal here is that working together, we pull everyone forward. You're here in this business, all of you together. You're dependent on each other. You're here to assist each other in growing the best, the most successful, the most profitable business that you can. Home Instead is here to help. So, what we're going to do in a couple of moments is bring our franchisees back up. We're going to take some questions from the audience, but I want to uh, end by saying that I enjoyed being a part of your special event uh, with very special thanks to our franchisee speakers, and I wish you all uh, a great convention. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Rod Roberts back to the stage. Okay. Hey, thank you, Robert. That My pleasure. That was very insightful. Thank you. Hey, let's give Robert one more round of applause. Thanks. And how about those franchise owners, huh? Yeah. Yeah, there they are. So... Well, what did we learn today? You know, I think one thing that we learned, there's lots of, uh, we have a lot in our control. You know, the opportunity has never been more clear. The need for you and your leadership and your business has never been greater, right? And we as we close our session today, I'd like to end with a little question and answers. Maybe you, you want some additional uh, information from what you heard. And so we have some business uh, performance managers that's out in the audience. You'll raise your hands, there you go. And if you have a question, raise your hand and they'll, they'll come to you. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with the first question. Robert, as, we, uh, as you've been spending some time here with us, meeting our fantastic franchise owners, their key players, our team here, when you go back to your, uh, your team, uh, how would you describe Home Instead Senior Care? Well, I, I give you a couple of thoughts, uh, Rod. I think first, um, it is amazing the correlation between the quality of the franchisee and the outcomes from the organization. I mean, absolutely unbelievable. The second is, it is amazing to me, particularly because I've spent a lot of time with this group, the difference engaged leadership makes in outcomes at the franchisee level, regardless of whether you're sitting in a market like Manassas, Virginia, which is part of the DC Metroplex, or you're sitting in a Cleveland, or you're sitting in an Erie, Pennsylvania. So those would be two of my big takeaways. Fantastic, very nice. Okay, I think we have a question over here, Brian. Yeah, um, I think, uh, who was it? Bob and Diane Cunningham, you had done on one of your slides, the share care, development of a share care home. Could you explain what that is? It's, uh, 
Do you want me to explain? It, we're in the uh, pilot stage of it. Uh, it is a home, that a ranch-style home, three-bedroom, two-bath home that we place three seniors in with one caregiver. And each senior pays eight hours of care. Uh, and then they pay rent on top of that. And the rent would include the food that's prepared for them. But it cuts the cost. It's for anyone who needs, uh, who needs 24 hour care that we wouldn't normally get, because obviously we want 24 hour care from each one of them if we can do it. Uh, but if, we, if they can't afford it, we could put three, of, three seniors, maximum of three seniors in this home. And uh, like I said, they each pay eight hours of care, uh, but they're getting 24 hours of care. Hopefully that explains. Great, thank you. I think we have another question right here. Test. Yep. Very good. So the share care was my uh, first question, but I had another one. The, the website for the broadcast telephone message for Jack. Yeah, it's uh, www.call-e as in Esther, M as in Mary, hyphen all, A-L-L dot com, call them all dot com. Great. We have another question. We got one here, Ryan. Okay, Brian. Hey, this question is uh, for Scott. I'm Rich Berube from Lexington, Kentucky. Quick question. You had a, made a great insight uh, about involving your staff in goal setting. I was just wondering if you could be a little bit more specific. Was it revenue, hours, particular to their job? We did a combination of both. I mean, we set the revenue level of, hey, this is what we want to hit in 2013. But we further went out and said, okay, these are the number of hours we need to build. Because we found out that a lot, uh, most of the people in the office understand more of how many hours do we need to get to get to that level. So we, we were constantly gave the feedback of both number of hours and also revenue. So um, staffing coordinators obviously can re relate a lot more to no adding number of hours. Uh, client care managers the same. So we did it kind of a combination of both things, uh, making sure they were focusing on number of hours and increasing hours where, where appropriate. So Great. Do we have any other questions? Okay. Well, great. Well, thank you for answering those. And I want to remind everybody, don't forget your handouts that you have at your tables. You know, take time to identify the influences that will make a difference in your business and focus on what you can control.